Hello everybody. Today's video I'm going to take a few minutes and show you how to again improve your chord changing. This does seem like a big topic on a lot of the forums I see. Uh, people are constantly asking how to improve and smooth out their chord changes. I already have a couple videos of how I teach especially beginners but that uh, will work for anybody. This will work for anybody as well. This is also a great thing if you are a classroom instructor and you have three or four or I have you know 30 kids we're all strumming guitar at different levels of chord changing so uh, this works pretty well it can be a little confusing as you'll see maybe when you have a bunch of kids doing it uh, different things at the same time but I do find that I can at least give them the option and you'll see what I mean here in just a minute so this is just another technique that I use to help increase uh, smoothness of chord changing and confidence with them and so forth with that so let's go ahead and zoom in and see what I'm talking about okay so here is the close-up here. This is mainly about the left hand anyways because it's chord changing. There is going to be a little bit of strumming involved as you'll see here in just a minute, but you don't really need to see the right hand for that. It's mainly just down strumming anyways for this activity. So first and foremost, you've seen some of the other videos, just a quick recap. One of the things I might have the kids do, or not might have them do, but I have them, uh, we spend a lot of time with just the left hand without the right hand at all. So many times I have them go through an entire song where we go through all of the shapes of the chord first. Uh, I'll, we'll just go in order. I'll say, okay, this song has G in it. Show me a G. Make sure everybody knows what the G is. Then I'll say, okay, this next song, chord has, or the next measure has a C in it. Uh, maybe a D7 and then back to G. So first we go through all that. Secondly, I'll do it with the counting. So I'll count every measure. So if a G chord has two measures, I'll go one, two, three, four, one, two, three three, four, one, and so forth. All right, so now, usually I just go right in to the down strumming four times from there. However, depending on the class, depending on the student, what we might do is this activity instead. All right, so what I might have them do is, first off, we would just take maybe two chords, maybe the G and the C. And again, it could be any two chords, G, E minor, especially two chords that students might need extra instruction on. This works really well. So what we can do is take them and instead of strumming four, what we do is we strum it once and then the three next counts is they have the opportunity to move to that next one and they have to be ready to strum on count four. So for example, we would go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three and so forth. Now I can slow that down a little bit if I need to, if they need just a little bit extra time, but the goal is they get one strum and then they are supposed to move during the rest. That's the whole purpose of this. They get one strum and three counts to move to the next chord and hopefully by then they're ready for that. And it kind of gives them um, almost like a goal. They're like, okay, you got to hit this mark right here. And it really, you'll see that encourages them versus just doing one, two, three, four, one, two, four and so forth. It seems like it's almost like a game. It's like, okay, you've got to get that ready for that strum. Okay, so once they've got that down, now what you could do is you could go through your whole song or your whole exercise that way. So if I have G, C to D7, back to G, just the normal one, four, five progression, you could go through a whole song or exercise with that if you want. Or it can be just between two chords, however you want to mix and match that. Um, a lot of times we'll do it for the whole song. So we'll go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and so forth. So once they get that down pretty good, then the next step is give them two strums. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now they have, again, a little bit less time. And then again, you can go through the whole song again or your exercise and do it with, again, two strums with two rests. And then probably, as you can guess, the last one would be three strums. One, two, three, rest. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then hopefully by then you're ready to do two, three, all four strums. Mm -hmm. 
and hopefully they're doing that from there. And again, a big, uh, big thing for me is to make sure that students never stop that strumming once we do the full four. And hopefully by that point they've learned that they can get to their chords quickly enough and not have to worry about stopping in between each chord. Okay, so one thing I forgot here real quick as I was editing the video, I forgot to mention that how you use this in, in differentiated instruction with a classroom is if you have different kids at different levels of this chord changing. So if some kids can do it with one strum and then they need the three pauses and some can do it two, some can do it, you can have the entire class just pick the version that they do the best and go from there. Now it can be a little chaotic. Some kids will get more confused because they hear strumming all over the place. But I found for the most part, kids can know what they're doing by themselves, you know, or keep keep track of what they're doing by themselves. Even if I've got, you know, 30 kids and, you know, 10 of them are doing all four strums, 10 of them are doing halves. A lot of times, I, it kind of depends on the student, but it can help them do that. So one thing I've done is just give them the option, say, okay, do whatever version you feel best. If you can only strum once, you just need to make sure that you're strumming on count one with the new chord if needed, or start the new measure on count one with the strum, and as long as they're that. And then usually quickly, most kids will eventually transition right into the four strums.